Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live and today it is my special honor to welcome Mark Menchaca who is starring in Netflix's upcoming movie No One Gets Out Alive. Mark, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, first of all, great job. I saw the movie. It is being released September 29th. For all our viewers who want to go check it out, it's called No One Gets Out Alive. Uh, Mark stars in it, and he does an amazing job. And let's get right to it. Now, the story is the way I see it of a woman a desperate woman. It's a story of desperation of a woman who is trying to find herself, who finds herself at the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, when you, the script first came your way, what attracted you to the role of Red? Um, well, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've never played a, a guy named, maybe I did play one guy named Red before, but that was, that was one thing I thought it fit. Uh, <laughs> as I do have a red beard. And uh, I don't know, I just, I, I like the story of, of, of her. And uh, I mean, ultimately I'm an obstacle in that, in that story, but I, I love the story of Christina and, you know, being an undocumented person in the, in the country and um, trying to make that work. And it's, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, it's one of those topics that's, that's, that's very, present right now it is um and uh yeah and my i my my fit my dad's side of the family was from mexico and um so that it all kind of worked for me i i, I just liked like the like the, that aspect of it awesome now uh red your character for me at least i found some sympathy uh for him because he was uh in a way a coward uh to his older brother now so red is not just this very basic movie antagonist he's layered there's layers to red uh what did you do to prepare to play a complex character like him um well i mean i would i would say generally what I do to, to play anybody who is will be ultimately seen as kind of the bad guy is uh, finding the, you know, I mean, and it, it was in the script, the, the humanity of Red was there. Um, I mean, you could really, you could see that he struggled with what he was ultimately doing and, and what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that was the way I interpreted it, that, um, there was a, there was a, it was a very hard choice and, uh, especially with Christina's character, um, I think she was the one who kind of, she was like the straw that broke the camel's back for him. And he, in a sense, because, yeah. uh, I, I felt like that he really struggled with with uh with what she was going through and what he would have wanted for her exactly red is torn between family loyalty and doing the right thing which he knows what he's doing is wrong uh and he tries to ultimately in his way at least try to help uh amber played by Christina Rodlow, who is also fantastic in this movie. What was it like working with Christina? Uh, I loved working with Christina. I would work with her again in a heartbeat. She, she and I kind of, we, we hit it off the first time we met uh, in, in, in Cleveland in March of 2020, right before it shut everything down. Wow. We met out there and... Um, Yes, she was a lovely person, and I think, I think because of our uh, the relationship that we kind of just it, that just was naturally there at the beginning. I think that made it even it, it made made it even harder in the film to uh, to to do what I was supposed to do exactly because exactly. I was rooting the whole time it, it, it's hard to talk about and not give away spoilers isn't it it's like you gotta yeah. <laughs> I i'm totally with you on that now amber 
uh, I feel is a character that has some resentment towards her mother who has passed. Uh, and she feels guilty because uh, there is a side of her that has this resentment that she's given up a chunk of her life uh to spend with her mom and she's haunted by that now would you say that is a a social commentary in this movie about how when parents get older it's the children's responsibility to take care of the parents um in some way yes i mean uh i mean i do think our our parents, uh, whether we like to admit it or not, they give a lot of, of oh, their yeah. lives bringing us up. And it's, I, I feel like, you know, I don't know, family's hard to get away from. Exactly. Even, I'm a, I, even I, when you want to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a dad, and I, you know, I can attest to bringing up three children. And uh, as a parent, you don't want to burden your children with the fact of them having to take care of you in at old age. But uh, in this movie, that's sort of not, you know, what's uh, being portrayed from uh, Amber's mom. Uh, what? How did you feel about that part of the story where, you know, Amber is sort of kind of forced to be with her mom and it really shapes her into what she becomes and leads her to a desperate situation, which ultimately leads her to you and your building. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, I think overall we don't have any control over the, over the, um, the situations that we're born into. Um, and I'm sure, you know, as a, as a father, uh, that, you kind of just, you don't, we don't really know what we're doing as far as like we, we, some kids come into the world and you just, you you try to shepherd them along and give them their own freedoms, but then you have to take some freedoms away. You know, there's, you kind of, and I I can see how, you know, I, you know, you, you would blame your parents for certain things, but um, I don't know. I, I thought it was, I thought it was very real in, in some respects it as is. far as the relationship between her mother and her. Yeah. Uh, between Amber and her mother. I'm Bob. Sorry. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I thought I, I was, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a very real depiction of. Me too. And it's something that you don't see very often in films. It's usually the other way, the, I guess the socially appropriate way uh, it was it, it was very refreshing in this film to see a more realistic view of what the world is uh, like. Now, moving on, uh, David Figlioli plays Becker, uh, your brother, who is a few apples short of a fruit basket, his character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you two had fantastic chemistry uh, on the screen together as brothers, you, you know, and we're not talking about the loving brothers either. Uh did you and David work together to build that chemistry, like on the side? Did you rehearse on how to get that relationship portrayed right on the screen? Uh, no, I mean, we did a little bit of rehearsal before we shot. Um, but I, but really, I think I, David and I just kind of, uh, I think we knew who each other was and who we were to each other. And uh, we just, you know, I, I guess back to being a parent, uh, it's, you know, time being an actor, you just, you don't know exactly what you're doing. You're just like, let's, here, here you go. Let's see if this works. And um, fortunately, it worked for us. So uh, now let's talk a little bit about the ritualistic aspects in the film. We're not going to give away, obviously, any spoilers, but there are some ritualistic aspects in the film uh, that your character is somewhat involved in. Uh, Now, to get into the role and to play it the way that you wanted to portray Red, did you do any kind of character backstory backstory for yourself 
to explain some of the ritualistic aspects to better bring Red to life? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think that kind of depends on how you work as an actor, but I did do, you know, I did do work on, um, on our, on, on, uh, on our childhood together and, um, and then some different points in our, like in growing up and to where we were, um, that was kind of, I don't know that uh, I, for some reason, childhood is a very important yeah. thing to me. And, and when I work, um, I like to think of the characters as children and maybe what that moment of, of, uh, the, the loss of innocence was like, what was it that, that, and maybe turned the mind in a different direction. So, yeah. So I, I, I guess the answer to your question is yes. Okay. I, I did some of that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's that's what I figured because, like I said, Red is a very complex and layered character. Now, this is a Netflix movie. It is coming out on Netflix. Uh, is this your first pr- uh, Netflix project that you worked on? No. No, I've uh, I've been fortunate enough to to work on a couple of Netflix gigs. Uh, I was I did Ozark first season and have come back uh, a couple of times on that show, and then um, and then I did a show called Raising Dion, which was also a Netflix show. Now Netflix so, is, in my opinion, an amazing company. Uh, to be with production and work with how do you feel about working with netflix as uh, as partners i mean i've loved it i think you know uh, my experience has been with these two shows and ozark you know has been a ozark was a good platform for a lot of people um and you know there's uh, they i Netflix really gave Jason freedom, Jason Bateman freedom yeah. to to do what he wanted to do with the show, and uh, and I think it I think it comes across because I think they've allowed him and kind of been there for him as he's made this show that's become a you know a very it's a hit. I mean, it is hit. a hit, absolutely. Yeah. Now and. Oh, go on. No, I was just going to say, raising Dion too. I thought was it was wonderful, and it was it was a beautiful hit show. Not, but like you know, for a younger audience that I normally don't get to do, and uh, I've some of my favorite moments of somebody coming up to to say I I recognize you from this was from like there was this one kid. There's been other kids, but there was this one kid in Brooklyn that came up. And uh, so anyways, Netflix was the platform that that happened on. That's, and, that's, you know, it's it's like that's where we that's where kids watch their uh, their uh, content. The, exactly. It's the go to place. Uh, now, in your career, you have played a wide spectrum of characters from rich, powerful men down to the petty thief, criminal to the bad guy. How have you avoided in your very long successful career not being boxed into playing a particular type of character um and spreading your wings and showing everybody that hey i am capable of more than just this uh i you know i think that i've i've had conversations with my managers uh that i've said i don't want to do the same thing over and over again. Um, that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it would just kind of kill me creatively as an yeah. actor. Um, but also through, you know, through meeting people on shows and movies, uh, producers and writers. And, you know, when you, when you're, when you hang out with them outside of the context of the movie, they see that you're a different person than who you are on screen. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's helped. Yeah. I, I, 
I have, I have really no, I don't really have an idea how to answer that, but I'm very grateful that, um, that I had, that I haven't been pinholed to one specific character. Well, and I hope it doesn't. Uh, it's not, I, I think it comes down to talent. You are an extremely talented actor and the fact that you don't just that you you had that conversation with your manager and you said from very early on that you don't want to be you know boxed in a particular character and you've shown they from like i said you can do the the powerful businessman down to the drunken criminal and everything in between is a testament to your acting so congratulations on that um now what would you say would you say ozark was one of the big breaks that you got in your career yeah it was it was definitely one of the one of the big ones um i you, i think as you go on uh, i think you always think oh that's the big one and then that's the big one but then sometimes you have somebody come and they reference a show from six or seven years ago yeah they're like that's why i wanted you for this job but i mean ozark just for instance last night i was uh i'm, I'm in sevilla spain right now and uh i was at i was at this place and having a drink and this guy was like i i recognize you from something i mean i've just shaved and cut my hair and it's like i recognize you from something and then and then of course the what it was was ozark he was like oh i did he was like that i knew i knew it was i i couldn't place it but yeah um and i and that happens kind of wherever i go i feel like ozark is is what most people um right, nowadays right. yeah right from. well that leads we're almost out of time uh, i know you have a very busy schedule i do want to ask you have been on so many hit shows like csi Homeland, Ozark, Sleepy Hollow, The Blacklist, and the list goes on and on and on. Is there any particular project that you have worked on that you really had a lot of fun with that character? I mean, not, not to not to not to go back to the the same old bone, but um, Ozark's been one of the most special shows I've I've ever been a part of uh, from the cast and the crew that I got to work with uh, to this beautiful character that I was given. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still get a little, uh, I still get a little emotional about that character. Um, I haven't, I haven't fully said goodbye yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. You uh, were, I mean, you were amazing in Ozark. And again, we're out of time. And Mark, I know you're a busy man. I want to thank you so much uh, for the time that you did give us. Guys, the movie's called No One Gets Out Alive. It's premiering on Netflix Wednesday, September 29th. Uh, it is a paranormal thriller mystery i mean it's a little bit of everything uh when it comes to the horror realm it's great it's scary it's freaky and it's a great you know great acting great character storytelling please check it out on netflix september 29th mark thank you so much for joining us any final thoughts before we go uh no watch the movie exactly watch the movie yeah. guys no one gets out alive on netflix mark thank you so much uh, All right, thank you. thank you to our entire audience. Till next time, on behalf of Mark and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Bye-bye.